I think Mekonitz is, is, is unique. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, when we talk about jazz musicians, they're all unique, but <laughs> Lee is more unique. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he is now, uh, he is uh, a bit older than me. He, he, has, he has turned 90. So he is still playing, still playing as well as ever. He's also taken to doing something more than he ever did before, although he always did it a little bit, which is singing. And uh, I remember finding uh, when I was, you know, when I was with Downbeat and other things, looking through old issues of Downbeat and finding a photo, which I think is the first one I'd ever seen of Lee, uh, from Chicago, it was taken in a club of a small band uh, and mentioned Lee in the caption and said, uh, Lee Konitz, alto, sax, and vocals. So I told him about that, and he said, yes, you know, he was singing. Uh, he has a lovely voice, and he can, you know, he can scat uh, in his own way. Uh, Lee is totally original. He doesn't, you know, he, he's got his own thing. And he seems to have had it from the start, because you can tell on his earliest recordings you know, that uh, there. And, of course, he was part of the Tristano uh, circle, part of it. He was, after Lenny, he was the leading one. And Lenny was a hugely interesting phenomenon and very complex. And uh, he, uh, had a kind of uh, directorial impulse, maybe in part because of his blindness. Uh, he really, uh, when he got people under his wing, they were really under his wing. Uh, and in the case of Lee, I think while that period with Lenny was very important to him and he made some wonderful music. He had to get out from under that influence because it was too dominating. And he did. You know, he came out on his own. But the things that he and Warren did together with Lenny, of course that was that sextet, uh, which was a wonderful group with its own sound, strictly own sound, and the way he and Warren melded, you know, uh, alto and tenor, was absolutely musically fascinating, and there's a beautiful sound. That sound was special. Of all the things that they did with Lenny, there's one that I particularly love. It's a thing called Marionette. And like most of Tristano's things, it's based on a standard. And I think this one, if I remember correctly, is September in the Rain. <laughs> but the way they, uh, Warren and Lee play together on that is just absolutely lovely. So Lee really came out into view uh, with Tristano. And uh, then uh, after he kind of liberated himself, he spent some time on the West Coast and he was sort of a little, you know, didn't hear about him for a while. And then he, when he came back uh, he was really his own man, and uh, fortunately, Norman Grants liked Lee a lot. Norman was, you know, uh, my friend Tad Horshein has written a biography of Norman, which was well overdue. Norman was amazing in his, the breadth of his taste, and uh, fortunately, he liked Lee very much, so he put him into some interesting recording situations, including some strings and including 
what uh, uh, whatever it was, uh, it was something that gave Lee more visibility in the recording scene than he had had before because Norman always had good distribution. He saw to that his records were available in places like Tower and Sam Goody's and whatever he had. So I think Lee got more visibility there. He recorded, there's one uh, wonderful thing that he did with Elvin Jones on drums. And, and uh, then, of course, he spent a lot of time in Europe and in various situations. It was in Italy, there was a producer, record producer in Italy who really liked Lee and did stuff with him. And he joined up with Marshall Solal, whom we need to talk about. Marshall is, uh, I think he's, right now, he may well be the greatest living jazz piano player. You know? And cut out the jazz, he just, <laughs> he's a marvel. But he and Lee made some wonderful duet things together. And then Lee was also for a while hooked up with uh, a very dear man whom I was extremely fond of, uh, Attila Zoller, who was Hungarian and made his way out of Hungary by, you know, creeping through some barbed wire on the border into Austria and uh, made a good name for himself here. And uh, he and Lee uh, had a really nice musical and personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Recorded for MPS, think, uh, uh, which also was called Saba, <laughs> German label, uh, headed up by, what is it, Hans Brunner Schwer, who had this famous uh, studio uh, that was part of his elaborate home in the Schwarzwald uh, with all these, there was a great catalog that label had. But Lee was uh, fortunately well recorded. There was a period when he was in Europe where, where he made uh, a zillion, he is, maybe he made as many as Sonny did. I mean, he, made, he made loads. Of, I tried to get a hold of all of them because I loved Lee's playing. And there was always something that was different there. Uh, but he recorded with Argentinians and uh, German. Nice uh, birthday recording for the German piano player whose name I've forgotten, uh, which was extraordinarily good, Lee. Uh, I had the pleasure once of uh, being with him on a cruise. It's about one of the very few cruises I ever did. I think it was a Norway uh, line. And he had recently married a lovely German girl and they were together and it was almost like their honeymoon. And uh, we had a nice time together. I remember running into Lee in Central Park. Uh, we were both walking in the park when we saw each other and sat down on a bench. And as I said, we were very close in age, we were about a year apart. And we were both in our 70s. And I don't know who started it, but <laughs> look at that, that we were both in our 70s and it was hard to believe. <laughs> Which reminds me of Dexter Gordon. When Dexter called me to invite me to his 60th birthday party at the Village Vanguard. He said, when we were on the phone, he said, 60, he said, who would believe it? <laughs> so anyway, Lee and I, Lee, uh, and I just very recently, uh, it was lovely of him to come to my uh, 80th birthday celebration that my good friend Lauren Schomburg set up at uh, their, you know, uh, jazz museum. And uh, it was so nice of Lee to show up for that. Actually, 
I did an interview with him and uh, then we wound up going to Sylvia's to eat. <laughs> Which incidentally I said Sylvia's was uh, a little disappointing from the many years before that I had last been there. Um, but Lee is, is an extraordinary musician and an extraordinary human being and uh, he is so, you know, it's awkward to say that he has been modern, you know, the word that they like to use, it, there was a time, they don't use it as much anymore, but everything was modern jazz, modern art, on it modern. Lee was always, he was modern from the start, and he is modern now. You might say that he's eternal, but, but he, he has his own conception, his own sound, and uh, he is one of the great improvisers. He, word is used very loosely, improvising, but Lee is really an improviser. You know. 